Yo you guys, what is going on? It's Blazenary here and today in this video I'm gonna be bringing you something different and special to the channel We are continuing with the second video of my how to be a hypey series However, this one I feel like breaks the rules just a little bit because I'm not necessarily explaining how to I'm just kind of showing you the hype behind some of these sneakers So what I'm gonna be doing today is showing you the most hype sneakers that I have in my collection We're gonna be going through the old stuff that used to be hype the new stuff that's hype the collabs that are hype all that stuff like just the hype beast sneakers Sneakers. And I've got a quite a bit of them. This is not my entire collection as you guys can see I still have some sneakers over there that I feel like did not deserve to make the cut and some of these sneakers You guys have never seen before because I just got them for this video I just want to let you guys know that next weekend. I'm gonna be having a pop-up in Chicago, Illinois So that's gonna be this coming Saturday. I need you guys to go ahead peep the flyer right here It's gonna be in Naperville, Illinois. So it's very close to Chicago. It's at a store called Central Hype I'll be there from 1 to 4 p.m. And I'll also be selling some exclusive blazonary merchandise that is never before released online. I definitely want all of my Midwest following to come out, show some love, come through. It's gonna be awesome. The Charlotte one was great. Footage is out coming soon. So, in my opinion, one of the first sneakers to break the internet were the Royal Ones. The reason why I'm putting these as number one is because back when Kanye wore them in 2013, it had a serious impact in hype sneakers. These used to go for maybe 200, 300 bucks. They released a numerous amount of times before the mass release in 2013. They released in 1985 when they first made their debut with Michael Jordan. Back in 1994, they made a pair and they made a pair in 2001. And then they made a pair in 2013. They've been the same model every time. Not too many differences have changed. But what made these sneakers change was the fact that Kanye West, which was a very influential rapper at the time, obviously you guys know who Kanye West is, he, when he wore these, people started to buy them. And that's what created a demand, that's what made them hype. So that's why I'm listing these as number one, because when Kanye wore these, they had a huge impact in the sneaker world and hype sneakers started becoming a thing. Something very similar happened also when Kanye West wore these. These are the Yeenits, as people call them, these are actually just flyknit trainers. You used to get these at like Dick's Sporting Goods and stuff, but now you can't find them anywhere without them being sold out or paying a little bit of a hefty price. And these are the 2013 units. And what Kanye did was he wore them. People saw that he wore them and they started having a movement. These $120 sneakers started going for $300 all the way up to like seven, eight hundred dollars at the time just for a pair of sneakers that Kanye West wore. I want to go ahead and credit a lot of this to Kanye because he started making the hype movement of sneakers. This is first when he started with Nike too, so keep this in mind. A little before this happened, it's kind of in the same era, so that's why I'm putting these next. This is the Dornbecker line. Right here on the right, I have these Dornbecker 4s. On the left, I have these Dornbecker 3s. These are a special collab between Nike and the Dornbecker Children's Hospital in Oregon. Nike works with Dornbecker Hospital on numerous amount of occasions, working with children who have diseases like leukemia and cancer, and they make a sneaker especially for them. The kids design them, and then they're mass sold to the public. When Dornbecker and Nike started working together, the Dornbecker releases started having a huge impact in the sneaker world. Back when these came out in 2010, these broke a lot of necks. Back in 2012, when these came out, these also broke a lot of necks. Nike at the time was dominating the hype of sneakers, obviously before all this happened. Like I'm starting from 2013. Clearly there's a lot of sneakers before that that happened that were huge drops, big collabs and everything. But I'm starting when the term hype beast started becoming a thing. So Nike is dominating the market at this time and it was a perfect opportunity for Kanye to collab with them on his first release of sneakers, the Nike Easy One. Personally, I don't own them because I'm not a huge fan of them. So I'll throw an image of the first ones that came out right here. These were the first sneakers that Kanye West designed with Nike and then he went ahead and did a second round so these are the second round right here these are the Air Yeezy 2 NRGs this is the platinum colorway and this is the red October colorway both of these sneakers have significant resale value now and even back then they had significant resale value also everybody was trying to get their hands on these and especially when these hit a restock Nike restocked these it was an insane time for Nike back in like 2013 2014 they had some serious hype sneakers and a serious hype movement however this started to change a little Bit. Kanye West then left Nike and he joined Adidas. Adidas at the time obviously was not popping. Nobody really was popping with Adidas. There were not really huge collabs. Like I know back in the day, the 80s and the early 90s. So we want to go ahead and shift this now because Adidas started taking the spotlight. When Kanye and Nike broke things off, Kanye was found wearing these on the internet. These are the Adidas 1.0 Ultra Boost. This is the all white colorway with the black bottom. 
As soon as this happened, these immediately sold out on Adidas. They sold out in stores, all because of Kanye wore them. Adidas started with seeing as like a hyper movement at the time. And then this is when Boost started becoming popular. So I wanna go ahead and say thanks to Kanye. He wore these, he made Boost extremely popular. As you guys know, now we have all the Yeezy Boost. We have like the Pharrell stuff. Boost at this time was just started. And that's when they first started having a hype movement. This is also around the time Kanye West released his first signature sneaker with Adidas. This is the Adidas. 750 grays at the time these were seen as like uggs and they were ugly and they were trash and they'll never sell turns out they only were going for like 600 on release day which is crazy now they go for so much more money but at the time kanye west really made an impact on the sneaker world with these i feel like this is a significant landmark because this is when adidas and kanye started doing a bunch of things and now to this day there's a good handful probably 15 20 pairs of adidas yeezys probably a little less actually so then this is when Adidas started dominating the market. They made the sneakers like the Adidas 350 right here. So this is the next signature sneaker that Kanye did with Adidas. They also did like the crepe boot, but that, that was separate. That wasn't with Adidas, but this is when Yeezys started becoming more of a following. They weren't just limited to the Nike stuff. You now had stuff with Adidas. Very shortly after the Turtle Dove release, you had the first release of the Pirate Blacks. These were next up on the list and people started realizing that these Yeezys would start going for some serious guap. At the time, Turtle Doves were going for about six, 700. When these came out, they were starting to go for like a thousand. And this is when Adidas sneakers started having a hyper movement. So you have these big sneaker brands like Nike and Adidas really battling it out. They're starting to become a third party in this whole sneaker hype brands like supreme started making their own sneakers and their own collaborations with nike and adidas actually that's never happened that would be insane though but supreme started working with nike they've done it on numerous occasions back in 2003 you guys see right here these are the nike supreme sb dunks these were going for some serious guap back in the day however they weren't necessarily as hype not a lot of people knew about them not a lot of people were really into them they were still rocking the jordan and stuff you now have things like supreme shoes these are the supreme nike air force ones and you all know air force ones they go for 88 bucks at your local full locker you can get them at basically anywhere but these though you can't get these this is a special collab that dropped i believe in 2014 2015 yeah 2014 these came out this is a huge landmark also in relation to the hyper sneakers shortly following that you have a wave of the supreme air jordan 5s these were super dope too because they took a classic jordan sneaker that everybody loved and they added a little bit of hype flavor in it so nike i feel like started getting back on top not necessarily on top top but like starting to get back into the game with the hype stuff because adidas really started taking it over now obviously you have different things like supreme collabing with vans these are super popular too this isn't necessarily chronological order but it's kind of the same topic you have the supreme checkered vans right here and a newer release you have the supreme nike shoes so clearly these brands are still working together and stuff like that but just wasn't limited to nike and adidas anymore you now have supreme too all right, so let's kind of break it down. You got like the ice cream. You got like Adidas is an ice cream. You got like Nike's an ice cream, but then you got the sprinkles and you can add the sprinkles to either side, right? It's starting to become a trend where for the next two to three years, Adidas and Nike were kind of clashing it out. And this is when Adidas came on top. Adidas then decided to release the Adidas Yeezy V2. So instead of having just V1 Yeezys, the 350s, you now have the 350 V2. This started a serious wave because Kanye decided that he wanted to mass produce Yeezys for the public. And sure enough, fast forward to the present day, I'm sure if you're watching this video, you probably want a pair of Yeezys or you own a pair of Yeezys. These are all the Adidas V2s. You got the white stripe. These kind of were really popping because this was the first neutral color that they decided to do. They were doing some whack colors like the belugas and they were doing other stuff like that. But this is a more central themed colorway that really took off in resale prices. You also have some simple ones like the all white Adidas Yeezys and this kind of sparked its own hype movement because people started to draw on them and when Kim K saw this, she's like, damn, I need that money. So she decided to hire an artist, a six year old artist or something like that to hand draw on Yeezys and sell them on Yeezy kids supplies. So like the kids Yeezys, you know, I did my own pair right here. These are on the internet all over uh, People have no idea who they are, but a lot of you guys are saying they're mine. So thank you Then you have stuff like the Adidas Yeezy V2 Zebras. These actually released 
two times because that's how insane they went. The first time, super limited, not a lot of people got them. A couple months later, everybody got them now. They're like 400 or something. They don't really go for that much anymore, but it just it made a huge impact. The V2 made a giant impact for Adidas. This is when I feel like Adidas, you know, easy, 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 just jumped over Jumpman. This is when this started to happen. You know, you got some other stuff too, like the frozen yellows that just came out, the 2.0 Belugas that just came out. Obviously these brands are still creating these kinds of sneakers because they're super popular and hype that a lot of people just want them. Then Kanye started doing stuff with Adidas that wasn't necessarily the boost line. You have the Yeezy Power Phases right here. These were such a nice little sneaker for those that wanted to get Yeezys that couldn't. Well, he said, screw it mass release them, make them to the public. Sure enough, you got Yeezys going for 160 bucks. And now we can pretty much consider Adidas is completely dominating the hype beast market in 2016 and 2017. If you guys remember, Nike had a pretty trash year in 2015, 2016. They were releasing some really whack colorways. They weren't necessarily getting the job done like Adidas was. They were providing what the public wanted, hype sneakers. And then Adidas was like, F it, we'll pick up a rapper too. We'll pick up another one. Let's get Pharrell in the mix. So you now have a line of Pharrell Adidas sneakers. That's not even related to Kanye, but Kanye started the whole boost movement. So you can kind of credit it to Kanye still. These are the Adidas human races. I only have one color of these that I can show you guys at the moment. You know, got the other ones in the vault resale secure bag. Boost itself started having an entire movement during this time period in 2016 and 2017. You have Pharrell doing stuff you have the ultra boost you got nmds you got all these insane boost sneakers that started coming out just because adidas was making what the public wanted and damn the public got it because there's now probably i think 10 or so pairs of these with different colorways and everything so adidas congratulations you took over the spot but i gotta say i think nike's coming back and i'll tell you why right now nike started doing some insane things they collab with Off-White, and this, in my opinion, is when I feel like Nike was brought back all of a sudden. You have the Off-White Air Force Ones right here, and this is only one of the 10 entire Off-White collection. I don't own any of it yet. I'm still working on it, but this is the one that I can show you right here. Nike decided, you know what? We're coming out of the gutter, and we're going to give the public what they want. We want to see hype brands, so this is when Supreme starts coming back in the mix. You have these brands like Supreme, the streetwear scene, collabing with the shoe scene, and you get really dope stuff like the supreme stuff you get stuff like the off-white stuff you get a lot of those really cool sneakers and then i also wanted to mention too that nike's really been killing stuff lately with the artists so you got travis scott up in the mix with his own sneaker the nike travis scott air forces i think that's really dope and nike went in a great direction let's get away from nike and adidas for a quick second i want to go ahead and give some credit to the other brands that i felt like didn't necessarily deserve a spot in the timeline but they definitely deserve a spot in the video i want to go ahead and give it up to ian connor because he had a really cool release with the Revenge Storms right here. So I just got these green colorway from Goat right here. Honestly, they're just a, a very nice van sneaker. They're basically vans, but cooler. They have lightning bolts, so it's cool. <laughs> they have some really good material on these too. So I definitely think these deserve a spot in the hype section because these are starting to become a new wave. You have other artists and other influencers. Stylist. And stylists, yeah, stylists starting to create their own sneakers. We have the Gucci flip flops in the white and the black colorways. This, when the song came out, I just flip -flop. when that bar came out, you can damn well believe everybody and their grandmother bought a pair of the Gucci slides. Although they weren't necessarily Nike or they weren't Adidas, they were still hype, and these are some hype shoes that came out. Might as well give it up to Gucci now. We'll just go with Gucci. We'll continue on. We have the Gucci Snakes. This is when a Gucci started becoming becoming a mainstream brand when rappers like Lil Pump started to wear more Gucci, rap about Gucci, talk about it, get tattoos of Gucci. Obviously, I'm not crediting all of Gucci's success to Lil Pump. There's other rappers that f with Gucci too. When the snakes came out, I specifically remember, I was like, damn, like, Gucci? Like, I didn't know. Like, I personally didn't know, and a lot of people didn't either. So I feel like when they started doing stuff with the snakes, when they got the new creative director, Gucci started gaining some traction as a hyper brand. You've got other versions of the snake models. You got, like, these right here that I own. You've got other stuff like the Fur Jones, you know? There's a ton of brands. Instead of it just being one brand, Nike. Instead of Nike dominating the hype beast sneaker scene, you've got hype beast stuff like Nike. You got Adidas, you got Supreme in the mix, you got all the streetwear brands in the mix, not just Supreme, you got all the streetwear brands in the mix, and you also have independent companies like Gucci, and you have people, independent people like Ian Connor and his Revenge Storms, creating waves in the hype ocean. 
So that's all I got to say in this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, please make sure you smash that like button. You drop a comment down below and let me know what you thought of this video. Was I educational? Did I provide you some good tips? If you got some knowledge of your own, please leave it in the comments down below. I'm sure some people would appreciate it. I just want to remind you guys too, my pop-up is next week. It's in Chicago. Or it's near Chicago. Here's the flyer one more time. Screenshot it if you think you're going to come out. Just tell your parents. Let them know. That's all I got to say. Thank you for watching. Have a great night day. Whenever you're watching, it's Blazonary. Stay positive. I'm out. Peace.